Uh, and thank, thank you very much indeed for inviting. Uh, these times are difficult, but still I think it is important to continue interactions and let's hope that in the, in the near future things will improve and at least this disaster is going to stop. Okay, uh, so this talk is somewhat related to the talk uh, which Ivan uh, Dniprov uh, gave uh, this morning, but I'll try to give some ge uh, general perspective on, uh, on this sort of formulations of gauge theories. And actually the main message is that uh, if we are talking about local gauge theories, and if we want to work with them in terms of some kind of graded geometry, homological methods like uh, like Vitaly Velikovsky formalism, then probably the right object to consider is this uh, what I call presymplectic gauge PDEs because it's a somewhat more flexible uh, flexible notion, which which is, uh, I believe, useful in applications, and in fact, it has already found some applications in uh, physics in field theory. Well, maybe not so impressive for the moment, but I hope uh, 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 such applications will come, more important applications will come in future. Uh, here I listed uh, uh, names. Um, uh, with whom I was working on uh, related issues for quite some years. So we init initiated this story with mostly with Glenn Bar Varnish. Then it was important uh, understanding, important step about these presymplectic structures in AKZ formalism made together with Kosti Alkalaev. And recent years we pushed uh, this to more geometrical level and uh, also worked on this gravity example Ivan mentioned uh, this morning with Alexei Kotov, who is present in the audience, and we still have some work in progress, though it's, <laughs> it's usually the infinite amount of projects. And also I mentioned Ivan Dniprov, who spoke this morning, and another uh, PhD student from Moscow, um, Slava Gritsayenko, who also uh, uh, contributed to uh, certain aspects. Okay. Uh, okay, it's, I think it's also important to mention which, uh, which are like sources of this approach. And uh, the first one is, of course, Battalion Wilkowski formalism. Then AKZ, which we had enough talks. I don't need to explain what it is, AKZ approach. Then uh, somewhat related to what's called unfolded approach, which was developed mostly uh, by Misha Vasiliev uh, in the context of higher spin theories. And he realized that it is, uh, it is useful, it can be useful to represent equations of motion of a gauge theory as a free differential algebra, unfolded approach. And uh, last but not least, and probably even more than that, is this uh, geometry, geometrical approach geometrical approach to PDs, which is main, mainly, the version I know a bit is the one of Vinogradov. So in some sense, uh, if, if you ask me what we are talking about, I would say that it's like an attempt to merge Battalion Wilkowski formalism with in the local version, of course, in the, in the, in the jet bundle uh, uh, version with uh, geometry of partial differential equations. And what import I have forgotten, indeed, this local BV on jet bundles, local BV, which is mainly due to uh, uh, Martin No and collaborators like Glenn Varnish and others. But there are also other people contributing substantially, but most of uh, review papers come, come from there. Okay, so, uh, and uh, what, what is important, the, uh, the, the main aspect for me will be the Lagrange, the Lagrangian, uh, will be Lagrangian systems, because at the level of equations of motion, this sort of things were understood quite some time ago, so I'm mostly interested in the way how to interpret 
Lagrangian or Battalion Wilkowski action in the formalism where at first glance there is no room for it. And uh, sometimes the, the way to, 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 to find uh, to find Lagrangians for the system is known in mass as inverse problem. If you have an equation, uh, by differential equation, you can ask it whether it is variational or not. And uh, this problem is known as an inverse problem, inverse problem of variational calculus. It doesn't make much sense, but okay, I'm not sure everybody would uh, would agree with me, it doesn't make much sense in uh, uh, in um, finite dimensional setting. So if we are dealing with zero dimensional setting, which means that our whatever space you call it, like configuration, uh, is finite dimensional. So it's like field theory living on a point. So all your fields are just coordinates on this. And equations are just some algebraic equations, which give us so some functions E alpha, which define a surface in our, in our, our configuration space. And we can ask, does this surface arise as a, as a uh, extrema of a certain, certain functional, which in this case is a function. And if we forget about uh, global geometry topogo topological issues, the answer is always positive because there is nothing to do. We find if it's a regular surface, we, if needed, we pass to independent E alpha, that we find a matrix or matrix valued function G alpha beta, and we simply write S, which is G alpha beta, E alpha E beta. If E alpha E beta are independent, functions and it is clear and everything is regular. I don't get into very important cases which are not regular, which we discussed also uh, uh, to, to, uh, this morning. Uh, but uh, in, in this simplified setup, we see that uh, there is nothing. You can always find, find an action. But in differential, in, in the case of ordinary and partial differential equations, we know that this is no longer the case. There are equations which are non-Lagrangian, non and you, sometimes you can make them, make, make them Lagrangian by, um, by changing this space of E, so finding another space where you can embed this surface. Or, uh, but sometimes you can't. The equations are simply non-Lagrangian. Um, so, so the problem becomes really a problem. Uh, you need to take a locality into account. You really need to talk about partial differential equations to address this issue. Okay, uh, so I need to say a few words about the language we use for partial differential equations. And then now, so we go, so this was like zero dimensional. Now we can get, go to n dimensional and I skip I skip an important case of one dimension where this theory is more or less known by different people. I know that in physics, uh, there were important contributions again by Mark and Nock, who essentially showed that uh, for one, uh, for first order system, it is, but you can have everything you can make first order. Essentially, you should look for symplectic structure to classify possible, possible Lagrangians. Okay, so if we are in n dimensions, then the, the situation is slightly, uh, slightly trickier. Yes. Um, okay, I'm not sure I can recall a correct statement because it depends also if you allow for constraints and things like that. It's, it's, it's quite tricky, but, uh, uh, but if you assume that, uh, again, I, I'm probably, uh, probably I can't uh, recollect correct statement precisely, but the idea is that in a, in a interesting sector, you need a symplectic structure on your face space. So you present your system in first order form. So it's first order, uh, first order equations. And then um, if you ask for a Lagrangian, for, for, for variational formulation, uh, they are somehow one-to-one -one with symplectic structures. But there are intricacies. Yes.
No, 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 no. But there are tricks. You are right. You have to be careful with Lagrangian, this sort of thing. Of course, they can be. Local, sure. Uh, global geometry is ignored in this talk. Don't, don't ask me about it. Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, let, let's go to end dimension. Okay. So we have a bundle, which I assume uh, for simplicity trivial. X is always my space time. And uh, fiber is F. So there is a projection to X. Um, then in order to talk about uh, partial differential equations, uh, to define them correctly in a geometrical way, we need to go to jet infinite jet bundle, beta to infinite of this E, which is, uh, as you know, you can of course define it invariantly as uh, equivalence classes of sections, but uh, I'm sure you all know this. Uh, I'll just spell the standard notations for coordinate, for coordinate systems, so we have X, uh, X, A on the base, of course, uploaded to, to uh, pull, 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 pulled back to, to the total bundle. Then you have coordinates uh, phi, I on the fibers, which again are promoted. And then you have all the independent derivatives as independent coordinates. So this is a space with these coordinates. And on this space, we have a what is called Cartan distribution. It's a canonical, canonical uh, object there, uh, which uh, essentially tells us that e at each point we have a horizontal, horizontal uh, subspace in the tangent space uh, to this guy, and it projects uh, nicely to to the into the base, and in coordinates it is generated by the following vector fields, which are called total derivatives, and they look in the standard coordinate they look, they look like this. Etc. The pattern is clear from here. So Cartan distribution is just generated by these vector fields. They commute. In this, in the coordinates, so this is zero. So this distribution is involutive. And uh, what is a system of a partial differential equation? In what follows, I'll skip the word system. System of PDEs. It's a collection of functions E alpha from J infinity of this stuff. Uh, but what it is geometrically? Functions on, uh, oh, sorry, I mean C infinity, it's S. Uh, these are local functions. They should, uh, they should be obtainable as a pullback from finite jets. So naively it means that they, should, they depend only on finite amount of coordinates of this sort. So infinite order derivatives are not allowed, otherwise, uh, otherwise, it's a different story. Okay, so we have these local functions. They define us PDE. So, uh, what is it in, in which sense? If we have a section of our, of our bundle, X to E, then there is a natural prolongation. This section has the extension to a section of infinite jets, where simply these guys become really really derivatives of components of the section. So I call it sigma prolonged. So I take the sigma prolonged, I put star here, uh, pull back, and apply it to these functions E alpha. It should be zero. This is a definition of solution. So uh, sigma, sigma is a section of this bundle. It is a solution if, uh, the pullback pull by the prolongation of this section of our functions uh, defining our system of PD is zero. Of course, uh, and, and then important object uh, is prolonged equation, because if this is correct, then also sigma star on total derivative of our E alpha or arbitrary number of total derivatives is also zero, so this follows from here. 
So these are differential, formal differential constituencies of our one. Yeah, this is because if you sigma star, I, I skip prolonged of dA of f is d over dx a of sigma star of f. Yeah, for any local function f. So uh, if th this holds, then all, of course, all uh, differential consequences holds, uh, hold as well. And what, what you can consider, you can consider a surface singled out by these guys, just an, th these functions, uh, zero locus of these functions together with this formal differential consequence. And this is what is called infinitely, infinitely prolonged, prolonged equation. So it's E, it's a sub-bundle in infinite jets. Uh, I assume that uh, among these E there are no just uh, pullbacks from so you, we don't have equations on independent variables. We still live in the same space. So, uh, so there is a there is a sub bundle E of infinite jets, uh, which is determined as the following surface, which is just E alpha. Yes, yes, yes. It's like this. Uh, so it's a surface singled out by E alpha and their, uh, their total derivative. These are algebraic equations. These guys are just functions on infinite jets and they determine a sub-bundle. And a, of what, is, what, what geometrically means solution? Geometrically solution means that it's prolongation, this prolonged section, because these guys are zero, evaluated on them, it sits in the surface. So if this is x, this is our E, so our section belongs to E. That's what it means. But not only that, but Well, this is curly E for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so our pro prolongation of our section belongs to this, to the, to this sub-bundle. And moreover, it's tangent uh, for the same reason it's tangent to Cartan distribution. And uh, in fact, uh, so, so in order to identify, and uh, in order to identify solutions, you don't need to know jet bundle. It's enough to know just a bundle E equipped with uh, the restriction of Cartan distribution to E. So this gives invariant definition of PDE, which is due to if I understand correctly, but I'm really not good in history, mostly to Vinogradov, but many other people uh, contributed, like, like Tulchiev and uh, others. Um, so definition is that PDE is a bundle uh, E over X. Of course, it's a very simplified setup, which I give, they have much more general, plus Cartan distribution. Pardon? E is a bundle, yeah, so we have a bundle over manifold of Yeah, it's just a sub. So here you construct it as a sub bundle of infinite jets. The fiber, it's a fiber bundle. Well, some regularities, of course, some regularities assumed otherwise. For all this, it's no, 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 no. No, it's 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 formal. It's regularity of the. 
It's a regularity of these functions E. If you can find, if they are like good constraints, then everything is okay, it's a submanifold, there is a projection, and the Cartan distribution is tangent to this, so you induce this thing. And then what these guys proposed, they said, okay, let's take it as a definition. What is great about this definition, that it does not depend which space of uh, dependent variables, how exactly you embed this E inside the jet bundle. It's like very invariant, which may, may, may be not very useful if you are after solutions or something like this, but still it is, uh, it, it is very invariant way of thinking about PDEs. For instance, you can easily answer the question when two PDEs are equivalent, which is not always obvious because they, they may look absolutely different. Uh, they are equivalent if the respective, uh, respective manifolds equipped with involutive dist uh, uh, horizontal distributions if they are isomorphic. Yes, 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 by, by construction, because, because you build epsilon as a prolongation. Total derivatives are tangent to this guy. That's why Cartan uh, planes are tangent to E. And it induced Cartan distribution on, on, uh, on E. Okay, what is solution? In this sense, solution are parallel sections of uh, of, of this bundle, so sigma uh, x to e is a solution if, I don't know how to write it, but let's write it like this, nabla sigma is zero. Where nabla is, you can view, this is horizontal distribution, you can view it as a connection. It just gives you a horizontal subspace at each point of your fiber bundle. And so uh, later write maybe in component form. So anyway, these are, these are parallel sections. So you can define solution, essentially you know everything about the equation. Of course, there are many technical things uh, behind the surface, but uh, it's not what I am after, so I just skip them. I just warn you that there can be, there can be many, many tricks, like if you take something infinite dimensional like that, it can be not a very good object. Okay. Uh, let's go to Lagrangians. Uh, so what we want, we want something like, um, we want something like invariant, we want to understand if our equation is Lagrangian, how can we see it from the point of view of this, uh, this bundle E, which is called often equation manifold, but this action, this question is not so is not so obvious because what are Lagrangians? Our Lagrangians, the standard language is again this jet bundle. So Lagrangian, by definition, is a form which is a differential form of horizontal rank n, where n is dimension of space time on our jet bundle, local form. And uh, differential forms on jet bundle are degraded because we have a vertical subspace at each point and we have horizontal subspace at each point thanks to Cartan distribution. That's why uh, the, the differential forms, uh, the al exterior algebra is degraded by horizontal and vertical form degree. And uh, this is known uh, as a variational by complex, this, this object, because the Durham differential on uh, on jet bundle decomposes into a horizontal piece, which rises this degree, and vertical piece, which rises this degree. And uh, together with some additional column, this is, uh, this is what's called Lagrangian. Uh, variational B complex, pardon? N is the top degree on X, but on fibers typically it's infinite because it's infinite dimension. usually infinite, but it is, yeah, it is, Lagrangian is a vertical zero form, horizontal top form, because you want to integrate it. Okay, and uh, given a Lagrangian, of course, you just write your action, uh, which depends on, a, it's a function of a section, just like this. You integrate over x, the pullback 
by, by prolongation of your section of your Lagrange form. So you apply this, you get n form on your base space, you integrate it, everything is invariant. This is action, and but you can also formulate uh, 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 Lagrange equations without talking about sections, you just immediately get EI, which are just, uh, this is called uh, Lagrange derivative. I write it in components of our Lagrangian. So if, if, if you, we have a Lagrangian, we have some equations, we take infinite prolongation and we get a PDE. So you see by its very nature, the Lagrangian, it lives on the jet space. Naive restriction of Lagrangian to the equation manifold doesn't make much sense. Often it is just zero. You know that in many uh, models of field theory, they restrict the value of Lagrangian on equations of motion is zero, like take Einstein gravity without cosmological constants, the scalar curvature is zero, so Lagrangian, Einstein, Hilbert Lagrangian is just zero on the stationary surface. So this is not a good, this doesn't work. Almost doesn't work. Uh, pardon? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Because Lagrangian lives on jets, it does not live on, on, uh, on, on the stationary surface. So what, what you do, uh, the, the thing is what's called presymplectic current, or presymplectic structure. The, the, some, some information about Lagrangian, which you can induce nevertheless on this uh, curly E, on the equation manifold with symplectic current. What's that? So you extract it as follows. You consider a vertical variational variation of Lagrangian, so vertical differential applied to Lagrangian, and then you, you, you look at it carefully. If you remember formula for early Lagrange equations, you can write it like this. It is dV phi i times early Lagrange equations. Mm, okay, signs are all not correct, of course. Uh, plus something which is in the image of horizontal differential. And this dH acts on uh, something. And this is potential for this presymplectic current. So we get this guy, chi. Then from this guy, chi, I, I'll immediately, it will be clear. So where chi sits, so chi, chi sits in n minus one, if you just count degree one of jets, j infinity of e. So it is horizontal n minus one and vertical one form, so that everything fits, because this brings one degree of vertical form. Why potential? Because you can act on it with vertical differential, and you can get a two form vertical and n minus one horizontal, which is called omega, which is of course by definition dv, dv closed, dv omega is zero, but if you pull it back, in fact you can even pull back the sky to E, so omega, you introduce omega without hat, which is omega pulled back restricted to E, and then you can see that dv omega equal to dh omega and equals zero was d omega equals zero. But this is already on equation manifold. So what you get, you get that on your equation manifold, Lagrangian induces, it's not canonical, there is an equivalence, but if you take a Lagrangian, you evaluate this guy, but it is defined up to some equivalence transformation. And this is a two form, uh, n minus one horizontal and two vertical. Oh, I forgot hat, you are right, thanks. Yes, so I pull back, yeah, I, I use hats for stuff on jets and without hats on equation manifold. Yeah, I was not systematic. Yes, 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 yes. It's a, yeah, one is obvious because it is dV of this sky, and another one, you just apply uh, dV here. This is killed, this is dV of uh, your equations, and here you get this. 
Uh, I think you, soon there will be an analog of Poincare Cartan form. Yes. Uh, okay, so we have this omega. And this omega, of course, it is closely related. You can extract uh, in some sense. Everything is up to some equivalence, so it is very difficult to make a precise statements. Uh, this is, of course, related to, as degree suggests, because it is n minus one degree. If you integrate it over n minus one dimensional uh, spatial surface, you get something like Hamiltonian formalism symplectic convergence. So it has to do, it has to do with that. But uh, that's not what I'm going to do. I want to stay co covariant. Let's say without space-time decomposition. So uh, we can observe the following thing. So for we, because d, d omega is zero locally, again, everything is locally all the time. I use Poincare lemma. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, from this, you can, uh, you can check that locally you can represent omega as d of chi plus l. In case if omega has arrived from chi, then it is the same chi. So this is n minus one, uh, one form, and this is n zero form. You just prove by playing these differentials and using that vertical differential is locally acyclic. Well, this L, uh, in, 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 if you, you, you in, in the case, if everything arises from Lagrangian, then you can choose it again. It's not unique, of course, because you use Poincare lemma. You can choose chi to be a, to be this chi and L to be a pullback of Lagrangian, which is a circle. But this is just a result of some. In in, it can be. Yeah, you can if you take these guys, this will be a possible solution. No, but this is total Dirac differential. You see, this, this, this omega, omega is dv of, uh, dv of chi. But you, you want to invert the RAM differential. So you want uh, pre-image under the RAM differential. That's why you get, uh, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. Well, if you, of course, you, you just uh, write it like this. It is dv plus dh on this chi plus L, perhaps something else, then you see that you get. <laughs> um, and so zero here you get, then you get D. Well, omega is equal to DV acting on chi by definition, right? So, uh, so you get DH of chi plus dv of l, right? So this should be zero. And then by consistency, you check that, e, that hmm? of course, because it's top form. It's, it's horizontal differential and l is a top, is horizontal top form. Okay, so you, uh, then you check consistency, uh, you, you, so chi exists, you know, then you check consistency, dv is acyclic locally, so you go with uh, dv, you go with dv on this and you know that it is zero, so that's why small l exists. No, no, okay, I, I, I have not made it precise, so if, okay, so suppose we are given with omega satisfying this condition, let's call it compatible presymplectic structure, then there exist chi locally, of course, chi and L, such that omega is the RAM on these guys. If this omega originates from a genuine Lagrangian, you can simply take as chi and L, this will be a solution. You just check it directly. Because you see, you, you pull back this equation to E. This term is gone because these are equations of motion. Okay, I, I could have messed up with science a little bit, which I don't remember by heart, yeah. Okay, um, 
So now, uh, so uh, we we define so the guy uh, d dv omega equal zero equal to dh omega. We call it compatible compatible presymplectic structure. Uh, yeah, this object was uh, in different context. I think it was first probably uh, uh, probably correct reference. I never checked it is Kulovsky Kulchiv, and then it was Witt and Krinkovich, some other people, plenty of people worked on this. And uh, this is of interest in what physicists call on shell methods. But of course they treat them not usually as a form on, on, uh, on, uh, on jets, but as a form on solution space understood as infinite dimensional manifold. Okay. So then there is the following trick. Once we have a once we have such a symplectic structure, omega, let's let me call it presymplectic structure, you can try to cook certain action. And the action looks like this. The trick is you see we have equation manifold. Somehow it is not suppose it is not embedded into jets. We don't know how it is embedded. But we want to construct an action. What can be a jet bundle which we can extract from nowhere? The answer is, possible answer, probably there are better, we can take infinite jets of the equation itself, because equation itself is a bundle over space time. We can take, a, we can take, we can take a, uh, epsilon is uh, typically, well, if, it, if equation is of, well, it's curly E, <laughs> I call it, e, if equation is uh, of finite type, it is finite dimensional, if it is Generic, it is infinite dimensional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are like if you take Killing equation, then this E is just finite dimensional, and everything is classical, classical geometry. Okay, so we take jets of this E, and on jets of this E, we uh, well, so we take sections. So if sigma, the Lagrangian will live here. So we take section. Uh, uh, x to e, and we can f define an action on sections. No, no, it is the same bundle. <laughs> yes, these are two different, but uh, but equation manifold is curly e. Before, for, until now, it was always, uh, always. It's 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 a sub. We arrived at it as a sub bundle of infinite jets of another bundle. But now, okay, maybe I should. Uh, well, it's, I just use sigma to de denote sections because. But here it says sigma is a section of equation manifold. Somehow it is the same, yes. But we forgot, we forgot about jets. So let's just consider, we have only one fiber bundle, which is E over X. Consider a section of this fiber bundle. Um, there is a following natural action, uh, functional, we, we can treat it as an action, which is just integral over X of uh, sigma star of chi plus L. So. Mm -hmm. They are different. Because that sigma, which was, uh, which was solution, yes, it was quite a special sig. Yes. Yes, yes, sigma points was quite a special section of this bundle. Now I can see the generic section. So I really prefer to forget about that, otherwise we, we have too many, too many objects. So forget about everything. Suppose, uh, suppose we have equation manifold, which is just a bundle with Cartan distribution. Cartan distribution means that we have a decomposition into horizontal and vertical part of our differential. Then we, we suppose we have compatible symplectic structure. Presymplectic, strictly speaking, it's always highly degenerate. And uh, in a geometrical sense, uh, then we, we take this pre-image, this chi plus L, which both are of total form degree N. You see here N minus one, here N, here 
here and here, here zero. So we pull it back by section to the base. So we get an N form, we integrate. Because chi is N minus one, one. So the total form degree is N. And L is N, N plus zero, total degree N. Because total degree of a form, if you forget about decomposition into vertical, for example, is just a sum. Okay, so this, this action, which uh, I call intrinsic, and in fact, from here, if you write it in coordinates, but I should probably speed up to avoid this, you, uh, you can recognize that it's a kind of Hamiltonian-like action, because um, if you, if you write it in coordinates, you will see that it looks like Hamiltonian action, like PQ dot minus H, something like this. Uh, and this is probably a proper counterpart of Poincaré and Cartan form, which you mentioned. But of course, this action is difficult to, to interpret because typically this bundle e is infinite dimensional, which means that we are dealing with theory with infinite amount of field because sigma is parameterized by infinite amount of components. So it's not very interesting action. But surprisingly, uh, there is a way to give it interpretation, and the way is to uh, actually consider vertical kernel of omega. So this omega, recall that it is uh, n minus, it's, it's in n minus one, two. So you can consider forms on this. You can consider fields which are, which are vertical and consider kernel of omega on vertical fields, and under some regularity assumption, you can take a quotient and uh, some kind of miracle happens, at least for usual examples. And if this initial omega came from uh, genuine Lagrangian, you reconstruct this Lagrangian. But this Lagrangian, this action, is actually kind of canonical because it is built entirely in terms of intrinsic geometry of Well, we do understand, but there are no strict theorems for the moment why. And there should be something, but there are can oh, okay, I, 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 can, I can prove you this in few lines. For a class of, uh, class of Lagrangian systems, but unfortunately the characterization of this class is not invariant. It's very simple, it's very natural physically, but it's not invariant. It's not in terms of intrinsic geometry of this E. It's, it's, uh, it's these systems which can be equivalently, equivalent means uh, auxiliary fields represented in a first order form such that their dependent variables remain independent, so there are no constraints on them. And uh, okay, I can give you, uh, from, I'm from field theory, so my examples all are field theoretical. So the only exceptions are theories with uh, differential consequences of zero degree. And uh, actually the only example, the only class of examples which I know explicitly, which doesn't work just like that, you need extra geometrical structure on, the, on, the, on, this, uh, on, on E, is massive fields, like Fritz Pauli, massive Fritz Pauli. Because, yep. Yeah, it is of a KZ type, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, it is it is a special special case of uh, this presymplectic ATZ. Well, for, for this, it's better to go to a KZ version of the story. But I, I can give you just one example very, very, if you take Einstein gravity, if you take an initial Lagrangian, if you take square root of G scalar curvature, and you play this game, and you quotient, uh, quotient uh, over the, uh, over the, over the, the kernel, you get L first order, which I'm sure you can guess what it's going to be. It's just uh, in proper coordinates, of course, they are not necessarily directly related. Uh, R of gamma, G, A, B. 
which is Palatini. And it depends on G and gamma, and it is first order. So, um, and, and this G and gamma arise as first jet coordinates, zero and first jet coordinates on uh, jet bundle for, for metrics. Of course, it's a local statement. So you see, it's, uh, th this construction is kind of canonical. It brings, it brings something. Yes, yes, you can, but I'm not sure I can. So what you can do from here, you can extract Hamiltonian formalism on the initial values. You can also play with boundaries, but I don't have much to say. You're absolutely right, but uh, let me stick to naive local analysis because it's not what I'm after now. But of course, it's one of the main motivation for developing these things is to apply them for theory with boundaries because that's where some intricate things become important. Indeed, you're absolutely right. Okay, so again, there are no theorems, so there is something, but it's not with not invariant characterization. And uh, what I'm going to jump now is to get this into context of BV. And that's where KZ will appear, because so morally, the philosophy is like this. Uh, this presymplectic KZ is a like, differential graded version of this story but in, in some, not in a direct way, not in a stupid way, you have to nevertheless adjust some stuff. And for this important notion is what we call, it's of course like kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, temporal name perhaps, but you need a name to call something. And with uh, Alexei, we called it gauge PDE. Uh, so this, this, this object, um, um, mostly, uh, somehow we observed it first with, with Glenn Barnish, but then uh, more refined and uh, careful treatment we did with, with Alexei, so just to, 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 just to give the, the correct names. Okay, so what is this? Uh, now we jump to differential graded story. So we, what it is? It's a definition, so it's a definition. So we have a bundle E over T1x, uh, even it's a Q bundle, so we here have Q, and here we have the RAM differential as a homological vector field here. Everything is Z-graded by default, so there is only one degree, and this is Z-degree, and they disregard supersymmetric stuff just to simplify life, so there is only one degree, and commutation relations are according to this degree, and this is Z-degree, which is Gauss number in in uh, BV, and uh, in, in this, it's, it's a form degree. This is a Q bundle. This concept was introduced by Th Thomas and Alexei, but it's quite a special Q bundle because it is Z-graded, and typically it's infinite dimensional, and it means that it can be, uh, it can be locally non-trivial as a Q bundle, in contrast to finite dimensions where you can locally We, it's a new story. It's a graded, it's a graded manifold. Um, No, really, we jump to different categories. So numbers are free, uh, D, D, E in the different category, exactly. Okay, so now we are in differential graded story. So we have a Q bundle, which means that projection is a map relating this vector field and this vector field. And once we are given with this thing, we can, in fact, uh, say what are solutions and what are gauge transformations. Again, we can see the sections from now T1x to, to E, and we ask sigma to be a Q section, which means that sigma star uh, Q, if I'm not mistaken, order is dx uh, sigma star. 
So it starts with a pullback. So section is a solution to, to this guy if it's a Q section. And similarly, you define uh, gauge transformation. You say that variation of this pullback map is given by uh, D um, X Xi star plus uh, Xi star Q composition, where Xi star is a map of degree uh, of degree minus one, and it, it is called gauge parameter. Of course, this you can extend further for gauge for gauge symmetries, etc. Xi star is a, it's, a, I'm not sure I can, it's a map from functions here to functions here satisfying certain, uh, what is the correct name for this? I, I, I don't remember. I, ca I can tell you that Xi star acting on Fg to functions is something like Xi star of F sigma star of G. So it is. it sits on a given solution. It, it determines you the gauge transformation of a solution. Thus, uh, uh, sigma star of F psi star of G. It's, a, yeah, it's, I, I don't know how to call it correctly. It's algebraically, it is just gay like this. It is attached to sigma. So strictly speaking, you should put sigma somewhere. Pardon? From functions on, on the total space to functions uh, to, but it's not a homomorphism. It's a map of degree minus one satisfying this kind of twisted, twisted uh, uh, Leibniz. No, it's if you find anyone like this, but if you have uh, coordinates of uh, proper degree, there are guys like this, then immediately you can check that this is a gauge symmetry of this equation. Where delta variation. So it's, uh, it's okay, I can write it like this. Uh, sigma star is equivalent. Gauge equivalent in the same class. So if you have a solution, I produce you a, a, an infinitesimally closed another solution with a parameter which is a generic function of space time. So it is a gauge symmetry. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you that once you have this data, you have uh, some differential equations in the game on sections, they're defined on sections. And you have uh, on, on, on this, on solutions of these equations, you have an action of, uh, of gauge, infinitesimal gauge transformations, which you read off just from this Q and DX. Yes, 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 to first order, of course, it's an infinitesimal. But uh, you can recognize these formulas because, of course, sigma star, if you think of functions here and here as homological complexes. We are, we Yes, because dx brings one degree, and this is... No, 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 no. Infinitesimally. If, if, if you substitute this in here, you will see that to first order in psi it is satisfied. If you, if, if you substitute sigma star shifted by this in the equation, you will see that it is satisfied to first order in psi. Yeah, yeah, it's infinitesimal. Yeah, it's just usual language. Yeah, infinitesimal. Yeah, like always in BV. Which symmetry? Well, I, I, in, initially, initially, I wrote delta as infinitesimal, right. and you asked me to rewrite it. Okay, let me let me. Let me let me speed up a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so the message is that uh, given this geometrical data, we can uh, extract some system of partial differential equations which have some uh, gauge symmetries uh, which are again determined by just this dx and q. And in fact, this is almost AKSZ because the first example of this object is indeed AKSZ. So in these terms, what it is, you take E uh, q to be a product of Q manifolds, which is T one X DX with um, some F Q. Some f this is target space of your EKZ. If you then consider this as a fiber bundle and consider uh, these conditions and these conditions, you will find that these are precisely equations of motion of uh, such AKZ sigma model. It is non-Lagrangian because there is no symplectic structure, uh, and uh, gauge symmetry is encoded in the usual differential of AKZ sigma model. And uh, the second example, because I want to illustrate that this notion is quite flexible, is BV uh, without symplectic structure. Well, okay, AKZ equations of motion, if you want level, but if you open the old paper, they show you that uh, without symplectic structure, you still have differential on the space of supermaps, and this differential contains information about equations of motion, gauge symmetries, etc. Generalized non-Lagrangian AKZ. Okay, uh, second one is non-Lagrangian BV non-Lagrangian BV. What it looks like, you take, so suppose you have a bundle of fields and anti-fields, now I use different letter, just to make sure we don't confuse, then you take J infinity of W, but you also consider, strictly speaking, horizontal forms on this guy, so I rephrase it like uh, a bundle over T1x. Strictly speaking, here I should add also these forms, but uh, let, let me not waste time on this. So I consider as, as a, so this, this guy is uh, as a graded manifold, it's an algebra of horizontal forms on this jet bundle, and it, can, it is naturally a bundle over T1x, because T1x are horizontal forms on X. Okay, so what we take as Q, as Q, we take a sum of uh, BRST differential, plus horizontal differential which acts on uh, horizontal forms, and degree is Gauss degree of BV plus form degree, or horizontal form degree, form degree. And you can prove that if you consider such a gauge PDE, and you consider equations of motion gauge symmetries, etc., this is precisely the BV system, equivalent to the BV system encoded in this stuff. Again, non-Lagrangian. Uh, and the third example, uh, which we already had, is this Vinogradov uh, PDE without, uh, without any BV structure. For this, you simply take, so if E0 to X is uh, equation, ma equation manifold as a bundle over independent variables, so you can see the E, it's uh, hori uh, horizontal forms on this guy, which I, as a graded manifold I denote by E, it's again bundle over T1X, and I take as Q just the horizontal differential determined by Cartan distribution. Then you can check that these equations of motion for, for this gauge PD are precisely the covariant constancy equation which are, uh, which sections of uh, equations should satisfy in order to be uh, solutions. So it's, the notion is quite flexible. It like unifies many, many things and there are many uh, kind of intermediate formulations in, be in between all this, but now let's, can I have, oh, I'm almost, but we started later. Can I have two minutes just to? Okay, well, for the most, maybe important stuff is, but uh, of course probably you get the idea is very simple. Now we want to just say that 
on gauge PDE, we have a compatible symplectic structure, but it's a bit tricky. So this pre, pre simp gauge PDE. So you have this E Q over T one X. So you ask omega to be vertical. Uh, vertical to form of degree n minus one where n is space time dimension, which as a vertical to form, which means it's representative of an equivalence class modular non-zero forms pulled back from the from the base, it satisfies d omega equals zero and L q omega equals zero. Okay, once you have this, you play the same game. You find chi such that d over chi is omega. You find h such that dh is the substitution of q to omega. Again, always on equivalence classes, some technicalities, it's not as simple as, uh, as before. And you prove that the following action which is into S, uh, S of a section of our thing, which is integral over T1x of sigma star applied to chi and evaluated on Durham differential. So it's a one form. Yep, I pull it back to the source and evaluate on Durham differential, which is a vector field on the source, minus pullback of this H. Uh, if you dig into it, you'll see that this is like a genuine generalization of uh, uh, the intrinsic action which I showed you. And in case if everything is of finite type and omega is non-degenerate, it is just a KZ. And uh, non-degenerate and also the bundle is locally trivial. This is just an AKZ action. And if you permit me, I'll show you two formulas just to give a feeling of what it looks like in non aqz setting. Uh, I prepared some slides. Okay, the simplest possible, which is Maxwell system, which is already gauge system. So uh, for a change, as a gauge PDE for Maxwell system, I take what's called a minimal model of the respective uh, BRST complex. So it contains only one ghost and bunch of curvatures F. It's also known as unfolded, as unfolded. Uh, uh, the respective equations of motion are known as unfolded equations of Maxwell. It's this uh, stuff from higher spins. But, but this is like minimal model, so it's kind of canonical. And then you can observe that on this minimal model, which is bundle, which is gauge PDE, there is the following symplectic structure, which is very simple. It is just theta is dx and minus two form. You contract this, you dualize it, you contract with curvature and then dc. It has correct degree, everything is fine. What are your maps? Your maps precisely contain one form, A, if you apply it to C, and it gives you these curvatures of AB, they are like scalar fields with extra, <laughs> with extra indices, then you can write down the intrinsic action determined, this, this, this presymplectic action determined by this form, and you get a canonical first order action for Maxwell. Then let's have a look of what BV looks like. Pardon? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's almost two, I'm almost done. Yes, so again, as Ivan explained us in the morning, we go to the space of super ma maps to make the form uh, regular, and that's what it looks like. And you see that in the spectrum of this C and F, all other variables are in the kernel, they do not play a role. You have precisely the ghost, the Maxwell field, uh, the C2 is anti-field to, uh, to uh, cur uh, curvature, then you have uh, anti-field to A, which is in red, F1, and F2 is an anti-field to C0. So it's a correct, complex, uh, correct, com 
correct set of BV fields, anti-fields, and if you evaluate action, you just get a correct BV action for, for this thing. And, uh, but, but, but you see how the kernel works. You see you have plenty of components, but in fact, in the, in the symplectic structure, you only see the certain traces of these Fs. So only minor, uh, only small amount of components of these Fs are actually survive the symplectic reduction. And in contrast to conformal gravity, which Ivan explained us uh, this morning, uh, here this reduction is absolutely straightforward because everything mm -hmm. is linear. Though extension to, for instance, Young Mills is also absolutely straightforward. Uh, and, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, we know about AKZ formalism, what is nice about it, that if you use it for quantization, it gives us kind of super field because BV looks very nice, BV action looks very nice in terms of these super maps, which look like super fields, then you just integrate it over this section over Lagrangian submanifold. In this case, it's almost as good as in usual, because as BV is again in terms of super field, you just need to integrate it not over Lagrangian submanifold, but uh, gauge conditions plus these additional gauge conditions which get rid of directions along the kernel, and surprisingly, even for nonlinear systems, we checked some examples, they're quite simple. So you can still write the superfield version of formal path integral. Uh, I can't tell you if it really helps to, to compute it in these cases. So that was the, uh, the point.